It's up top. Yeah. I didn't mean to do that. I accidentally built it upside down. Oh! Hey! There we go. That was. I'm gonna go with it works. I'm gonna say it works. I'm gonna say it works. Welcome into the banter, everybody. Um, no hunter today. He's gone forever. I'm just kidding. Um, so we're joined by we're joined by Brad today. All business, Brad. I am all manly, Brad. All business, Brad. Brad's first appearance on the new banter channel. Yeah, that's true. Um, today's episode of the banter is sponsored by Manscaped. A uh, quick word from them. It, it, you know, it's summertime now. Things it's are hot. heating up. And that's why you got to make sure you're all cleaned up with Manscaped. They're giving us all the tools to do so. Uh, the leaders in below the waist grooming are making sure we have a great summer uh, by giving us everything we need to stay fresh. So we dive into summer with Manscaped by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with code BANTER20. Uh, it all starts in that performance package 4.0 with the lawnmower 4.0 trimmer it has a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology it's quite amazing it also has a 7000 rpm motor a new multi-function on off switch which can engage a travel lock very helpful and gives you the ability to turn on the 400k or 4000k excuse me Jeez. led spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shave uh, did I mention it's also waterproof as well beach lake or shower it is going to be just fine for you um and they also have liquid formulations to keep that freshness freshness even at the hottest summer barbecues. Most importantly, use the Crop Preserver Body Odor to stay cool in the heat. It has a soothing aloe vera formula, um, and it's the best in the business for below-the-waist freshness. Um, and if you get the Performance Package 4.0, you're going to get two free gifts, the Manscaped Boxers, which are incredible, and the Shed Great Travel gift. Bag, which carries all of your stuff. Very nice as well. Mm. Um, and hey, if you're wearing sandals with some nasty toenails during the summer months, uh, you need to take a look at the Shears 2.0 Luxury Nail Grooming Kit. I've got it. It's pretty amazing. Yep, same. Um, so make sure go to manscaped.com, get 20% off plus free shipping with the code BANTER20. That's 20% off and free shipping with code BANTER20 at manscaped.com. Thanks again to Manscaped for sponsoring mm-hmm. the show. If you're, a, if you're a Manscaped user, two things to not look over. The boxers are incredible. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, I love the boxers. And definitely the uh the shed the the nail clippers keep it in my jujitsu bag they're a lifesaver they're great so thanks manscape i added a uh a new thing to my beard routine brad oh he did oh, yeah. what's that well it's not I, really, I, not really to my beard routine uh because i you only i had you started out doing it twice a week mm-hmm. but i kept on see whenever we were on when we were on the tour i basically was just sitting in the car every day with nothing to do except for look up in hunter's rear view mirror and look at my beard mm. and so i'd look at my beard and think man i wish that hair would grow right there and then i i'd heard before i think trevor me we've talked about it before mm-hmm. that there's this thing called a um they, they call it a beard roller but i think derma it's also roller. called a derma roller mm-hmm. and they've used it for like different things a lot and people <laughs> use it to get rid of wrinkles and stuff but i think more recently they've been mm-hmm. marketing it as a like be like promoting beard not even growth. just beard growth but just hair growth in general yeah. people do it on top of their head yeah. yeah and so i was like I, I can't tell if this is a scam or not it feels kind of weird because it's basically just like to let everybody know it's like a it's like a little handle that has a roller on the end mm-hmm. um usually but, ceramic or something right yeah but the roller has like 500 titanium needles on it like mm-hmm. really short little needles and um i gotta take the autofocus off this camera because it's not working um and so yeah so it's supposed to basically like pr- like uh activate dormant hair follicles mm-hmm. and like give and like tell them like grow out of this hole and it's supposed to like help in that way and i looked it up and it's like legit it's not like it's a complete scam and it's not like it works every time it's like it works for some people and it's like oh, okay that's cool yeah then i was like well how much are they gonna try to squeeze out of me for this thing well i got some chinese one off of Amazon for like seven dollars, and mm-hmm. so it didn't barely cost me anything. So I tried it the other day, and like I forgot until I went to go hold it up to my face that I'm like deathly afraid of needles. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I didn't yeah. think about that. I don't know why I didn't think about the fact that I was going to be putting hundreds of needles on my face, and I'm terrified of them. But then I got to the time that Gabby was sit- was standing next to me in our bathroom, and I went to go put it up to my face. I was like. I can't do it. And it took me like 15 <laughs> minutes to convince myself to finally do it. Then I did it and it doesn't hurt. It's just like, it's very uncomfortable, but it, it, fe- it feels like you're rolling a ball of tiny needles on your face. That's what it feels I, like. I've looked into it before. I, Cause I do like, there's so many like 
hair growth things because obviously I my facial hair growth is very limited and it, it I think there's potential because like I do mine doesn't really grow up high on my face but yeah. I there's hairs there that are trying mm-hmm. so I'm like it, of all the products that I've seen like that one makes the most sense where it's like there's definitely hair that will grow there probably when I'm 35 but like right. Let's let's get this thing going. So I've definitely <laughs> considered. I probably will. I I think like what I would try is, and I know you've already done this too, Connor. Is like that with a combination of like the rosemary oil. The rosemary oil I feel to like also worked for me. I had someone growth. tell me about that whenever I was in high school, and um, or going into college. I mean, and so I like I tried it, and I, I it's hard for me to tell if that like really worked or if I just was getting older. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. Since my beard has length then it tricks a lot of people into thinking that I have a nice beard. And and so a lot of people will say that I have a nice beard, but what's in my head is I don't have that nice of a beard. I just have really nice patience <laughs> because okay. that's what, that, a lot of times that's what it takes. Cause I don't like, I don't grow, like I don't, my mustache doesn't connect to my beard. These places right here next to my chin don't grow any hair. I don't know why it annoys me. Um, but I wanted a beard so bad my whole entire life that whenever my beard looked awkward in the beginning of college, I just had patience and I let it grow anyway. And then eventually it just kind of, it worked its way into something that looked like a beard. And Mm so I just, I have a lot nicer patience than I do uh, a beard, but you know, I believe maybe I'll roll it out, man. (laughs) Hey, don't underestimate the boar brush, the boar hair brush. That's, I feel like when I started using that and like, you know, you let it grow, you let it get straggly, you cut it like way down and you just, bore brush it out every day i think there's something to that Hmm. it it keeps mine like i guess lush fluffy if you will and like kind of encourages it outward instead of like curling under and like away so i think there's something to that too and yeah i use a brush every day i don't know it's i use the the manscape brush i don't know if it's bore i think it it might be it's very it kind of looks like a shoe shiner brush yeah it's the same style but I'll tell you both of you young ins here that with age comes beard. So just be patient. <laughs> be patient. It, it it will come. My dad's got a very nice beard. Carter, how long do you think you'll grow your beard before you're like I found myself on the trip also thinking I need to I think I need to take length off. You want to take some length off. Do you think you'll yeah. ever cuz I always like cuz I don't want to look like a crazy person. I like yeah. I, I want it to look like a I want to look um clean. Like, okay, I don't mind, like, I'm about to sneeze. Wow, never mind. I talked <laughs> myself out yourself, of it. Talked yeah. myself out of it. I don't oh want to, I, I don't necessarily need to look clean cut, but, like, I also, like, I don't mind looking like a little bit of a mountain man, but um, I don't, also don't want to just look like a crazy person. I or, think, or, like, the person that just has a really long beard. Do you think you'll ever, like, go down to, like, a shorter length beard? Or is, like, that you're never going to... I don't, I don't know. I can, I don't not, I don't love my, like, uh, like, let me rephrase that. That was about to sound really aggressive, but I don't feel that aggressively <laughs> about it. I don't have the most desirable face shape cause it's very round. So a very round face. So my beard actually gives my face contour, mm. um, and like allows me to make my face pointy. Hey, beards are men's makeup. That's what we have. That's yeah. True. Yeah. That's it's true. what we have. That's like, that's the reason I, I keep an amount of stubble around my chin and neckline because it gives me more of a jawline. <laughs> yeah. I don't have a super yeah. strong mm-hmm. jawline. I'm, I'm it's I'm, contour. <laughs> I'm a Jones. Like we're Welsh. So I have like the little like dimple chin. That's pretty common for us. Oh, Welsh no folk. way. Yeah. So I kind of keep that. My wife says I look like an ugly baby without a beard. So, <laughs> and then she's, she's right. So <laughs> I'm okay with that. I, I'm kind of like, this is pretty, pretty long for my beard. I like it a little shorter, yeah, it is but pretty long. I'm in like a rebellious phase, just, you know, coming out of corporate America, just want to be just wild <laughs> as long as my hair has ever been too. But I have, a, I have a, I, you know, I'm not, it's not like an agreement. It's kind of a gentleman's agreement with Jason. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cause he was in the military. He's yeah. Like, you guys are going the whole year, right? Yeah. It's like, we're going the whole year, not cutting our hair. Wow. We said beard trims are fine. We're doing trims. So that doesn't grow like out. Yeah. My, no. my trim, I took like an inch and a half off, but that's okay. okay. But the, it, for jujitsu, I can't be like way longer than this. Right. It already pull gets pulled a that bunch. But yeah, hair. I mean, it's getting to the point where it's like I have to untuck it from my shirt when I put it on in the morning, and that's like a very new feeling. Oh mm. my gosh! For, yeah, that happens to yeah. me whenever I get out of the shower. Mm. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not loving that per se. Hey, uh, real, real quick, I just want to show Trevor something in secret. Connor, will you call my phone, please? 
Yes. I just want to show you this. This <laughs> is very important. Sorry. Okay. And this is just mine and Trevor's secret. Sorry, listeners here, but I just really need Trevor to see this. And I have to really, I'm really, really I'm happy so about this. Scared. I'm so scared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to see that. That's funny, huh? Yeah. That was so fun. That was a gift that was <laughs> given to me by social media that I had to put on my phone. There you go. So, wow, that was a, that was a fun moment. Connor is going to be hating that the rest of the day. I know he's going to be like, okay. "What is on my phone?" I'll figure it out. I'll I'm, be okay. I'm very. It was cropped, so I'm not sure why it's not cropped now. Whenever you have a um, contact photo like that, it 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 looks cropped in the window, but it it won't does do. the whole picture for like Sorry. that well, thing. Yeah, I'll go ahead and fix that. But you see, you see the impact I'm trying to have there. Yeah, it's a thing on my <laughs> phone, by the way. That I don't know if you guys do this, but. I try to catch very weird, awkward moments of people mm -hmm. and make of their contact photos. Yeah. So if you have, I've like, done that. Like Trevor's is very, it, it's you with if that Gatorade bottle. Remember that? Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. If you're keeping that private between Trevor because you don't want to embarrass me on the internet, I give you full permission to embarrass me on the internet. No, it's just that picture that okay. Gabby posted of you guys where you have no beard and you have that like big oh, hat on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, that's the kind <laughs> like, of Kennedy one? I want to see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, no, I used to be really into big brim fedoras. Whenever I say fedora, people often think I'm talking about like a trilby, and that is not no, what no, I'm talking no, no. about. Like, because I, I, I don't particularly think that that's cool on me. Is the nicest way I can say that. But <laughs> I was really into. He thinks um, it's dumb on everybody. Continue. Yeah. I, I mean, it's just like I like I wore those in like elementary school, and yeah. but uh, or I had one that wore that had a guitar on it. <laughs> but I, I love that. Heck it's yeah. because whenever I was in high school. I was really into like indie folk bands. Marcus Mumford. Yeah. And Marcus Mumford particularly didn't wear this kind of hat, but he was the style of it. Yeah. Um, and the guy from the Lumineers wore this hat. I don't really care for the Lumineers anymore, but back in the day I liked them. Mm -hmm. And and so like I walked into a hat store in Charleston, South Carolina. It's called Gurin Bros. A lot of people know it now because they make trucker Guggen hats Brothers? that have the animals. They have like the all the trucker uh, hats you, you see with made animals Guggen on Bros, them. Man. Yeah, like all the trucker hats you see with the animals on them that just says like wolf yeah. or Trevor got me one with a rooster on it that says a word that is the reason why I don't wear it. <laughs> um, Another word for rooster. Yeah. And so, uh, but is. they, Continue. but they have those. That's for some reason they got really popular with those, I guess, because trucker hats became big, but they are known for making all American made really high quality like hats. And so I walked into that store and I saw one and I was like, I look like. I should be in one of those folk bands I listened to. Mm -hmm. And I, well, at the time I was in a folk band and I was like, this is perfect. And so I wore like, it, it's, it was bad. I'll admit I wore like a vest every single day and yeah. wore my hat and cuffed my pants and wore these boots that looked like I dug up a civil war general. Um, <laughs> or now you only do like two thirds of those things. Exactly. Yeah. But I had so many of these hats and these hats were like $200 a piece. You still have them. I still have them. They're actually at my parents' house, though. I really, yeah, I, need to I bring them. really need to get. Them. They're really, they're really nice hats. I just, I, but I wore them every single day for probably four years. Oh my gosh! Um, Next and, punishment video, you guys need to like. Connor's thing is to be like, for if you lose for a week, you have to wear that hat and a vest and those boots every just single day. Back outfit for a week. I'm nervous what it would do to me. Yeah, well, we could, it might would take me back. You could, flip. you might get stuck there. Yeah, yeah. I say I. You could flip the script on me. I was about to say you could flip the script on me and make me Everyone wear, has to wear their middle school trends. Yeah, make me wear like all like Under Armour and like neon and stuff. But here I am wearing a very neon hat right now. So maybe I wouldn't care that much. I think you, yeah. I'm, I and would have Hunter to would go be back. like, I just, like I would, I'm not ashamed of what I wear in middle school. I'd wear, I wear it every day anyway. Yeah, I say Hunter, I don't think wears anything different than Whitney. <laughs> like he just can wear his comfy athletic Which clothes. Which is very, yeah. you know, it's smart. It's yeah. smart because he doesn't have a moment like I have where everybody's like, oh, you wore those hats? And the problem is, is that I still think it was cool. <laughs> well, I don't think it was not it cool. Was, yeah, you're just ahead of your time. Yeah, that's, it. that's all. If you yeah, were, because after that, if you were famous. All the all like a ton of really famous artists. After I stopped wearing the hats, all started to wear those big hats, and you're then it became really. And then I was at freaking Liberty, and every smart buddy started wearing those big hats. That's mm -hmm. one of the reasons why I stopped wearing them, was because like I was in the school of music, and like so my freshman year, I was wearing them, and then as soon as I saw like. Other people start to wear them my sophomore year. I was like, I'm done. And I got a haircut that I didn't mind. And I was like, oh, I look kind of good without a hat. And then I stopped wearing the hats. And I never wore them ever again. Yeah. Dang. Moral you of know? the story here is killer whales are starting to attack boats. Really? Can we just address that? 
like organized attacks on boats. I don't know if you've ever really considered the fact that, and I actually was just watching a, uh, you know, like Our Planet, the yeah. series on Netflix. They have mm-hmm. a free episode on YouTube right now. I have Netflix, but I was also just scrolling through YouTube and I saw that and I was like, that's cool of them. So I mm-hmm. clicked on it and it was like the deep seas one. Mm-hmm. And these, then they were chasing down these dolphins, man. And killer whales, man, they're terrifying. They're so they scary terrifying. and yeah. nothing hunts them. I think it's really interesting. I think they, they should name more animals after the animals they kill. <laughs> that, that's because they're called killer whales because they kill whales. Yeah. Well, that's not a wolf. That's a killer all, rabbit. Yeah, they, are, yeah. they are also whales. No, they're not. Aren't, are they they're not? Do, they're in the dolphin family. Yeah. So they just literally orcas. call them. Listen, here's the thing about orcas. Well, I know they're orcas, but I thought that was a kind of... I thought they're called orca whales. No, they're, they're, they're more so closer related to the dolphin. I'm gonna have to look this up. Yeah. You can, because I could have sworn they're called orca whales. I don't know. I don't know that. I'm not a biologist, but but I may be completely wrong. No, it's just as orcas. Yeah, Cause, yeah, they are. I know they that's are. That's the more, that's the craziest thing ever. Yeah. If they literally are just called killer whale because they they kill whales. Well, I, I would assume that it's because originally they thought they were whales. Yeah. They're maybe because they are huge. But also, well, they do kill whales. I just love that we're glossing over the fact that they are organizing attacks. Yeah, what do you mean? Describe what you mean. Who you mean cares when if they're an orca or whale? Whenever you say they, organizing attacks, what what is okay. happening there? Right now, I think it's off the coast of California. I could be very wrong. It's off one of the coasts in America. Mm-hmm. Um, there is a, a, a particular pod of orcas that are organizing attacks on b- boats like it's human like a, boats like a gang of them yeah and they are show like scientists are documenting this they think it came from uh, a boat hit one of like the um like alpha females in the pod and they think it's revenge oriented oh my god and they're the it's like john wick but revenge with of killer the whales of the apes is looking more and more realistic right Dang. well and they are they're showing like some of the older whales that have been attacking the boats they are teaching the other whales where to attack on the boat that's damaging. Okay, have you ever thought about... That's freaking let me, awesome. Let me, let me think about this for a second. Think about how powerful animal in, like animal and human instincts are, right? Yeah. Like animals, one of the most crazy things you ever see is just their instincts and how they mm-hmm. are just, from birth, they are, are taught yeah. things and like, yeah. Now imagine if like those instincts... Are start to be translated into things like mm-hmm. damaging boats. Yeah. And we're going to have to deal with that. Yeah, that's a thing. They're man. all going to be teaching their next kids how to target the weak spot in a boat. Well, here's well, here's the thing about... That's what, crazy. We're going to have to have killer whale-proof bowels. That's like, that's like imagine, right. like right now, for example, like snakes, they don't hunt humans. But what if we stomped on mama snake one of these days and all of a sudden snakes started teaching each other they're, to hunt down humans I would like say orca that whales. I would say that like snakes instincts have been changed if anything over time to it ignore avoid to avoid us. humans because that's right. what like mm-hmm. people like the the constant phrase is like and I the think phrase is the snake is more scared of you and than I, you are of it. I think orcas and are the, are really smart because if they're in the dolphin family which I just looked up they are mm-hmm. dolphins are really smart. So mm-hmm. I th- I think that like some animals are probably more adept to that than others yeah like, well, like learning male uh, well, mammals a, are yeah well orc, orcas also here's the thing gosh, sorry orcas are scary you know this i'm i went down a wormhole with orcas okay so um number one orcas have their own dialects amongst pods and parts of the world Di- okay so they different have, from yeah. other orcas there, there's a scientist right now that's working with ai <laughs> that is learning how to communicate with them in a, in their own language so translate english to Orca. Oh my gosh! I didn't even think about using AI to talk to animals because yeah. it can learn their language. Exactly, and it's lo- the AI terrifying. is learning that there's- we we might actually be close to a, being able to put one of those collars on a dog and it tells you what the dog is saying. Exactly, and it's terrifying. <laughs> and I don't so want to know what any of my I don't dogs either. I like speaking me. for him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, and they're testing it out, and like um, Bruno's sad right now. <laughs> The, they're testing it out, and uh, some of the places still have killer or killer whales, orcas. Sorry, that's like hey, offensive. Yeah, sorry, it's a little derogatory me. to the yeah. whales. Yeah, gotta, they're going to find this. They're and more kill than. Me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're going to start listening to our podcast. So, uh, but anyway, yeah, they have started teaching them. They've learned like through this AI, they're communicating with the orcas, and they're like the orcas are recognizing it and being able to communicate back. <laughs> I don't like that. Wait, I, wait, wait. wait. Yes. Who is communicating back with them? The orcas are communicating back with the humans. Now, here's my question: Are we smart to the enough? AI? So they'll they'll be like, um, 
they'll play a tone uh-huh. and they'll put it like a fish in to the aquarium and they teach them that and eventually the orca will mimic that tone when it wants to eat now guys i've got some wow. i've got wow. a great idea that's a spoken language that's crazy if orcas let's say orcas are a bunch of pushovers let's say okay. we learn how to communicate with them and they're a bunch of pushovers and we, and just like us being able to speak their language means that they're going to listen to us especially if we can like emulate being their master mm-hmm. we True. all of a sudden we start telling them to generate free electricity for us we invent some system that like they're swimming generates us electricity mm-hmm. Peter's gonna have a field day yeah but it sounds if like we can, slavery <laughs> they're just workers man if we can get them <laughs> if we can get them doing what we want all of a sudden we got ourselves a new source of electricity or just start turning that, up that water we tell yeah. them to go we tell them to only somehow train them to only get pirate boats oh my gosh so we an now army have, no we now have a we have the navy police seals, force the navy seals the navy seals the navy are, are going to have a division now, that's we have the navy seals, seals yeah. and then we have the navy <laughs> whales the but the seals, seals are actually seals <laughs> yeah. the actual navy seals an orca army that's terrifying that's you do it. not want They've that got coming for you bulletproof vests on yeah. kevlar whales fast, dude but yeah we put them in mech suits. Why don't we just replace all lasers the, on their head? Why don't we replace all the fish in the ocean with robot fish instead? You could probably <laughs> strap a nuke to an orca. Then like all the trash in the water. Launch, then all the trash in the ocean wouldn't bother orca. them as much. <laughs> Think yeah. about this: if all the fish in the ocean were robots, mm-hmm. then the oil spills would help them. <laughs> <laughs> That was so insensitive. Uh, yeah. well, <laughs> well, it was good uh, being on the banter, the last one ever to exist. <laughs> one of my that. favorite jokes that I make is like, you know, like sometimes people typically have like, for some reason, have a preference of gas station over another. My dad has always been one of those people that is like, I'm like, oh, there's a gas station right there. He's like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to go to the Shell. I, w- I would rather go to this instead. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, whatever, weirdo. And um, but it's just, I think this is probably just like a his generation thing where they care about that stuff. Well, because of that, I guess I'm a weirdo because I care too. I prefer to go to a BP, mm. but it's because it's purely because growing up, we had a BP near our house. That was the only that was the only place for a while that sold mm-hmm. um, ethanol free gas. So I would always go there to fill up the lawnmower. Right. So that was just like I since I always went there to fill up the lawnmower. I just think like a BP is the place that I go to. I mm-hmm. don't care anymore. I prefer Listen, she- see, I prefer sheets because they have mozzarella sticks. I've got. But oh, keep going. But one of my fa- this is this was a long way around. Just one joke I wanted to tell. I always like to be like, I always just pre- I prefer to go to BP. I just really like all that they've done for the environment. Yeah. Well, here it's funny that you say that. <laughs> I I literally boycotted BP to the extreme that there were two times I almost ran out of gas on the side of the road because I refused to stop at a BP because of the that. oil spill until like last year, and it, it lasted for like almost ten years. I res- I. I very much respect that you 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 control you have a lot of power in yeah. who, what businesses you support with your hard-earned money and mm-hmm. I think that you have every right to decide where it goes to. I, I don't believe in cancel culture. I cost them literally hundreds of dollars over ten years. <laughs> got this, I got this survey here on gas stations, um, America's favorite gas stations. It has America's favorite gas stations and America's most hated gas stations, like in the survey. And there's some other interesting stuff here, which is very interesting because number five on America's most hated is Sheets, which that doesn't make what I, that makes almost. That I'm guessing be true. I'm, that's not true. That must be because all of the people who put Wawa as their favorite probably said that Sheets is their least favorite because that's like a rivalry. That's so stupid. Because um, Wawa was number five on most loved. But America's favorite gas station overall in the Those survey Wawa was people, Costco. You guys, the Costco gas station. Uh-oh. Followed by Loves, followed yeah, by loves, Shell, loves is then Seven Eleven, then Wawa, then Speedway. Yeah, but none of them have the big Maz. <laughs> then Mobile, Circle K, Golf, and Sam's Club. Um, number Listen, one hated you, was Exxon. I feel like I need. A, I have a really? message for the Wawa lovers of the world. All right, mm-hmm. you guys need to set your Get pride squashed, aside. Bro. All right, get squashed. All right, <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> it is honestly crazy that like how can you, you hate guys, sheets? You need to put your pride aside because listen, us sheets lovers, we are we are well rounded enough adults to say we love sheets, but we I would still put Wawa on a top ten gas station list because I don't feel like I had to dump on the other one just because I like one more. Yeah, grow up, that, Wawa yeah. lovers. First of all, sheets has a Z in it. Let's just not we don't. Wawa not doesn't have that. a Z. Wa- and what is a Wawa? Yeah, what yeah, is you sound a like an idiot. If you say it. <laughs> yeah, 
That is true. I've been to Wawa <laughs> twice. You know what? I changed my argument. Let's dump on Wawa. <laughs> I've been to Wawa twice, and yeah, it's a great gas station, but like Sheets is it's, also yeah, a great gas I station. Think it's, I think it's a, gr- I think it's a thing, good gas station. I like Sheets I better, ate Sheets though. for like I ate Sheets for lunch for like a year straight. Um, Connor did as well. You were involved yeah. in that. Dude, why you have to out me like that? Um, just to make sure people didn't realize like it was a work thing. We have no idea what the lasting I, effects of that. I don't. Yeah, I don't know why we did it. Well, I know why we did it. The vibes. Yeah. The, vibe, um, the sheets vibe. Very high. Yeah, yeah, that is. But yeah. <laughs> even after that, I can still eat sheets food, and like that tells you something about it. Now, I will say it doesn't look as delectable to me as it did once. Um, but there are still certain things, like for instance, the big Moz, the app platter is like still undefeated. Now you can go there every day and get something unique to what you got the day before. Yeah, the breakfast and be completely burritos, happy. The However, if you eat there good. for multiple weeks on end, you will start to feel the effects, and that mm-hmm. is, it's all very bad for you. Gosh, I but don't that's just that's survive. just unhealthy food. That's not sheep. I just don't even know how I survived that period in my life. I like how was, was I? Living? I think that I think. Let me give you an example. I think Brody started it Mm-mm. because no, he was there one we were time all, and he was like, mm, "I think Brody getting on board with it definitely prolonged it because yeah. we loved that Brody was in on it with yeah. us." Because yeah, because that's very true. We used that was to do whenever the Brody lived thing. here. We used to do the Kroger thing and we invited Mikey once and he was like, "This is the dumbest thing ever." And made us realize <laughs> that it was the dumbest thing ever and we yeah. never did it again. Yeah, but when Brody got on well, board we didn't with do the it again because thing, we weren't in your Kroger anymore. Yeah, but like even now we haven't really returned that much. It yeah, was like right. it was a thing there for a while. Yeah. It was really fun when we used to croak it up. Yeah, we still do sometimes. <laughs> but that, but up. like the sheets thing, Brody jumped on board and was like all in because he loves sheets too. I'm like, all right, this is great. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, let me give you an example of like a thing that I would. This is like something I would eat from sheets. I'm gonna be gross myself out right now. Um, <laughs> I would get like a quesarito, which is which like is a burrito that's like wrapped in a quesadilla. But it's not like the Taco Bell one where it's like a little burrito mm-hmm. with like nacho cheese. No, it's a legit and I would full size quesadilla that's like yes, it's huge. It's massive. And it's I would size get, of pizza. I would get the breakfast one a lot. So you'd have like eggs, bacon, peppers, onions, whatever in it. And then they'd be like, oh, do you want to put tots in your burrito? Tater tots? I'd be like, yeah. That burrito would weigh like legitimately three pounds. And I would eat that <laughs> And now, luckily, le- early on in the Sheets experience, we learned a valuable lessons, with, which is that you do not get a main entree and an app platter, in yeah. particular if you get a bigger entree. Because like, but just be clear, whenever you learn that lesson, it doesn't mean, it doesn't we mean didn't, you stop. Yeah, we still did it. It just sometimes. means you know it. Because <laughs> if you ate like a big thing like that, and, like if I got like a big Moz, which is like mm-hmm. a chicken parm sandwich, basically, yeah, um, and an app platter. And then I was. This is the period of time where I was collecting the Mallow Cup points. Yeah. Ew. I mean, I want to be sick there just was, talking about it. Was How was I on, eating that? Well, the, all, not only was it unhealthy, but there was days on end where I was spending eighteen dollars. Oh my on gosh, lunch. it was so expensive. And it's like, so like expensive. the thing is, like, I'll I'll weigh myself nowadays, and like, I would be like, oh, I haven't I haven't worked out in a while, and it's like, oh yeah, I still I'm you know I'm still doing okay. Well, yeah, you know why? Because I'm not <laughs> eating sheets every day. Like, <laughs> it makes a difference. <laughs> Like, oh, oh my god! I gosh. literally would go and I would just be like, ah, oh, I'm just going to get this and this. Like, That's oh, not I'm how I'm doing pretty good today. It's only $15. <laughs> yeah, the vi- the vibes and sheets were, that was like the, the idea that you could go to the same place right down the road and get a new thing every time. Now, I will say, lucky for us, there, well, actually probably would have been better for us if this existed back then for every reason, but there's a Chick-fil-A literally across the street from our warehouse don't, now. Don't like, I've, how's that working for you, Brad? You're still there. It, well... I think of it's been open for about what? June first is when it opened. It's open for twenty one days. I've probably eaten Chick fil A like where did you twelve get the times. 21? Okay, oh, that's not too bad. Oh my gosh. You've got oh, it twelve oh, days. Yeah, 12 about, times about every days? every other day, every third day. That's not bad at all because I, if I was still working at the warehouse, I think at this point I'd already be getting breakfast every day there. Because chicken minis. Yeah. Well I uh <laughs> I am I'm, I'm in a bit of a challenge to myself too. Like I think I'm at like sixteen or eighteen thousand Chick fil A points. And I'm just gonna oh, I just wanna wow. like ride it out. I wanna try to get right. to hundred K. During yeah. during so, COVID, wow. I was a, a pretty dominant Chick-fil-A member. Mm-hmm. Um, I like was a red member, like the highest yeah. thing. And I remember the first time I really, the way I used to go with like, and the way I've kind of always done it with points, but it particularly back when I was like in college mm-hmm. and like money came and went, like when I got paid, you'd spend a bunch of it. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't have bills really. Um, so I, my whole rule was like in the good times, we use my money to buy Chick-fil-A and in the bad times, that's when we use the points. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I remember like one time, say I, 
I like, I guess I just had money for a little bit longer. So I wasn't really using the point Mm -hmm. and it just added up and added up and added up. And then I wanted to use it one day and I bought myself, uh, my wife, who was, I guess my girlfriend at the time, uh, her sister, both her sisters. I bought them all lunch with just the points. Wow. Greatest day of my life. Like, and I was there like, Oh, oh, I want to get a salad, even though that's way more points. Oh yeah. Throw it on there. I got that. Wow. No problem. It was awesome. Crazy. I wonder if I can find that transaction. Thanks Dwayne Marshall for the free spicy chicken biscuit that I'm going to get on the way over to the The, warehouse. The owner of the place can like issue one to you. Yeah. He's given me all kinds of free stuff. That's That's amazing. Issue out free stuff. I I just, Oh, I got a regular chicken biscuit from him, and I've got chicken minis from him. That's oh, amazing. And I have a regular chicken sandwich. I have four rewards. Oh from my god, dude! The operator at that restaurant's amazing. Dude, let's go, Dwayne. I didn't bring lunch today. Maybe I'm trying. All right, to I lied. I only have thirteen thousand nine hundred forty-one. That's a lot. Because like, what's, I, a, what's here's a the problem? Cost on there like a. 800 800 I thought it was it used to be like 6 maybe you know Brad inflation. my I, new house we are now walking distance from Chick-fil-A that's yeah. dangerous that is too. dangerous I mean, we got Chick-fil-A for Gosh, dinner last night um so what kind of like food do you think is going to be at the Orca gas station oh, you stay they a get red member for <laughs> you probably stay a like red member for shrimp. life yeah I think so I'm probably still like a red shrimp like, I have I have friends that work for a windshape camp um say, I didn't hear anything you said what is the, that so windshape camp is a like Christian camp that's owned by Chick Fil A. Oh, okay. That was, um, I had no context to that. I'm but it's sorry. like a normal like youth camp. Yeah. Where like they, but except it's just a huge one. That, and you get Chick Fil A every day. <laughs> I yeah. I don't know how it works, but he actually works on like their like um, what's the word I'm looking for? Whenever you're trying to get Kitchen. people. Whenever oh, you're trying to get people. recruitment. Recru- Thank you. That is exactly what I was looking for. Brad. But this. he works like on their recruitment team to get um like staff members or mm-hmm. or camp counselors basically so he goes to different college campuses and like sets up the booth that everybody walks by and only stops at for the candy and um until like get people to go but part of what he does is they have big groups of people that show up to like learn more about it mm. and he goes with like the company card and gets thousands of dollars worth of chick-fil-a Mm-hmm. And, and so get all the points. So he scans yeah. his app whenever they do like three thousand dollar orders at Chick Fil A. Mm-hmm. I had a buddy like they that. basically because of that on their app they have, un they probably have a lifetime worth of unlimited Chick Fil A. Yeah. Because every because every other day, literally like every other day, they are purchasing thousands of dollars worth of Chick-fil-A yeah. and scanning their app. Rewards, so they just like have unlimited rem- rewards. Rewards dollars are how the world goes around. Yep. And if you can like, if you actually spend, if you were to spend a decent amount of time just looking at your life and figuring out how to get the most, which is a hassle to do. And a lot of times it involves signing up for all this and that and that. Mm-hmm. But if you can optimize your life for yep. rewards points, it's ridiculous what Let you can me, gain. Any, Brad knows about yeah, it. Any of you that are listening to this podcast and you're in your car and you're traveling for work or you're in the plane and you're traveling for work or you're on the subway or you're on a train or you're on a boat, make sure you have an orca or an resistant automobile. boat. <laughs> and, but if you are traveling and you are, you have a company card or you're, you know, you're getting reimbursed for your work travels and dining and things like that. If you are not signed up for all the rewards and like also cater your life to certain restaurants or chains where you can maximize your points, you are you need to stop listening to this right now and start doing that. Free money. Because I I have this year is the first year in nine years I've ever had to pay for a hotel because I had so many reward points. I traveled yeah, for awesome. work and they again clear with your employer, they're ninety nine percent probably gonna be okay with it. You know, I got reward. I stayed in a hotel like three to four nights a week for eight years. Mm. So I, you know, just use my rewards. The company reimbursed me for it or paid for it. So I get all those rewards. Same thing for flying. Choose one airline and you get points and rewards for that. Your company's paying for that. You know, my company, I was lucky they paid for like all my dining, like everything throughout the day. If I had to take clients out or whatever. Mm. So I tried to stick to like certain chains and even like fast food wise if I was like driving you know I was like okay well if there's Chick-fil-A's I'm choosing that probably and there's like certain other you know reward programs but there's all kinds of and these companies are banking it's almost like insurance they're banking on you signing up you're a free outlet for advertising and you don't really use their right. their points but mm-hmm. I mean they're like you and said, like because like granted the points exchange mm-hmm. isn't really fair in this I don't know fair is not the right word it isn't like amazing but it adds up yeah. Well, yeah. Even, even like 
uh, credit cards, if you're smart with it, like, you know, your AMXs and there's a lot of other, I mean, every card, there's a, pr a preferred like credit card, but even just like putting your normal stuff on that yeah. and then mm -hmm. you're going to pay it off anyway. This, yeah. This is the first year I, I was able to like switch everything over to my credit card and um, I, I haven't spent any of my rewards points this year because my goal is to see like where it got to at the end of the year and I've got like hundreds and hundreds of dollars in rewards points that are just free money. Yeah. It's like, it's like don't, <laughs> exactly. it's like don't buy it specifically for the points because then it's not no. worth it. But if you're going to buy it anyway, you might as well get the points for it. Like yeah. I got, I just, uh, I got a, a Walmart, uh, they have like a capital one there just because I shop there and there's bonus, like mm -hmm. there's like extra I, points on top of their <laughs> reward points just for, now let me give that. you a, let me give you a story of, uh, about the Walmart credit card. My freshman year, oh, no. um, in college, my roommate, he, he was one of those kids. And like a lot of us were this way when we were freshmen in college, but like was one of those guys who's like living to the last dollar, like yeah. 20 bucks at a time that he would, his parents would send him or whatever, mm -hmm. and then he would try and like decide what he was gonna spend on. Or as soon yeah. as you get it, we go on a cookout, like yeah. Yeah. that kind of guy. And he, um, my freshman year, he was really into like getting like long boards to like ride around campus. It was pretty popular on campus, to, like get like a or like a penny board or a long board, something to, like ride around campus. Yeah. On. And man, I wish I had my one wheel in college. Yeah, he didn't have uh, enough to buy this one off of Walmart, but he saw on their site. That if he oh, no. on Walmart at Walmart, yeah, he saw on their site that if he like, well, he was probably like a twenty dollar penny board or something. He's trying yeah. to get, and he probably had like ten dollars. Mm -hmm. If you sign up for their credit card, they gave you like a certain, like a fifty dollar, but like Walmart gift card or something. So he signed <laughs> it probably less than that. It was probably like a twenty dollar gift yeah. card. So he signed up for a credit card just to get this twenty dollar penny board, and then I think he ended up racking up debt on that credit card. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, it worked. <laughs> It worked like a charm for them. Yeah, that's yeah. exactly what it was. And I, like, I remember talking to the same guy like years, years later, and he was like, yeah, I got this new Apple credit card. And he's like, yeah, I got about three grand of debt on it, though. <laughs> it doesn't work for everybody, but yeah, it was very funny. funny. Like, I'd never seen somebody sign up for a credit card yeah. just to um, just to buy like a $20 item with a gift card. That that's was a mistake. pretty funny. I did mine because I it, they had like some sort of bonus thing, and I was buying a new TV, and I was like, it makes sense. The Apple one? Uh, no, this was the, oh, the, the Walmart one. The you're Walmart saying, one, yeah. yeah. So. I did a Venmo one because the the Venmo credit mm -hmm. card, a, it makes your Venmo a little more convenient to use because you don't have to have a bank account linked yeah. to it. Yeah. Um, if you just Venmo people, it uses that card. Yeah. And B, they did a thing when they were first coming out with their card where if you spent five hundred, you got or you had to spend a thousand dollars, but then you got three hundred dollars like free. Like mm -hmm. they would give you a three hundred dollar yeah. credit, which mm -hmm. was like really good. So I was like, yeah, sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's yeah. But I think, and even like local, a lot of local stores too. Like Paul's, like I've obviously you guys know, I'm into like fish tanks and aquariums, but they also have like a, a dog food club, and I can get frankly better dog food for my dogs at the same price as anywhere else that for like bad you know like cheap dog food what, like, and then the 10th bag's free like why would i not do that i don't oh, yeah. know what the most obscure mm -hmm. businesses out there that have like credit cards because i know not everybody can like like partner with visa yeah. like but then like there's some big ones like cards that i probably could have benefited from in the past would be like an amazon credit card i think my grandma has one of those because she is an Am like use amazon for everything mm -hmm. but there's definitely some businesses where i'm like yeah because like kroger has one i yeah. think for example, mm. um, I think any of the big like grocery chains have them because it just makes sense. They can keep retention and they give rewards and special specialized coupons and stuff for mm -hmm. their members. But I mean, yeah, there's there's a whole world out there where I mean, seven of the most ridiculous credit cards of all time. This is going to yeah. be a this fantastic. Be yeah. Let's see how worthless these are. The World of Warcraft Visa card. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, Though this card is no longer available, we can't imagine why. You could actually get a visa that gave you points toward one ultimate goal to fund more World of Warcraft purchases. Wow. That's insane. The Starbucks Rewards Visa card. You can still get this. We're not yeah. going to lie. We can totally see some of our friends buying into this card, but it's a little ridiculous. This program looks like a Starbucks Rewards membership, only with a card. So, yeah, they just basically are like, it's the same thing as a normal Starbucks mm -hmm. thing that you scan, except we're going to yeah. put on a credit card so and you, you get in debt. Yeah. The NASA credit card. Oh, you save up to go to space. <laughs> it's just a regular old credit card that you can receive if you become part of the NASA Federal Credit Union. The Hello Kitty Visa Platinum card. It's also still available. Don't like that. I also um, don't like credit unions, but continue. It's You don't like credit unions? No. 
you can you can I, I, I'll get on a whole for every yeah. for every fifty five thousand points you get you get a fifty dollar discount that can be used on Hello Kitty's parent website, the Seven Eleven Universal Fleet Card. <laughs> now that's more up your alley. Still available. What is this one? If you you have to love Seven Eleven a whole heck of a lot to get this card, okay. we kind of get it. If you're constantly on the road and somehow always find a Seven Eleven for filling up, it offers up to seven cents cash back per gallon of fuel you buy. Mm. That's pretty good. So that's yep. yeah. So that's 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 pretty good. Just being a Seven Eleven rewards member, that's another one I have like mm-hmm. I think ten to twelve thousand <laughs> rewards in. But just being a, a free rewards member, you usually get like between five and fifteen cents off per gallon just by putting in your phone number. Yeah. So wow. just, and their breakfast pizza, it is amazing. Yeah, it's amazing. And the it not even as good. good as the what are the other ones? The breakfast. Um, Empanadas. Empanadas are amazing. Oh, I forgot I want about more. That Brad, empanadas. it's been too long. Well, they were they were let's, out. Let's you, get some on Friday. Okay, let's do it. And I'll by let's get some, in. you bring some. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I'll, do that. I'll do that. Uh, you, I'll use my rewards. There you go. <laughs> the International Brotherhood of Magicians credit card no longer available. Hunter has that. <laughs> um, it allowed users to earn points toward, toward brand name magic equipment and events. And then the last one here is the Kentucky the Kentucky Derby credit card. Oh, Bank of America's yeah. board must have gotten together and said, hmm, yes, let's create a credit card specifically for our members who are so obsessed with the Kentucky Derby that they'd use it to redeem points during a single weekend every year. It actually happened. A card allowed its members wow. to earn points that they could exchange That's for crazy. equestrian merchandise and gambling credits during the big uh, big hat horse weekend. Wow. I want. I bet you Caesars Palace has one. I bet you like. I bet you oh, casinos sure. have them and stuff like that. that is I know like casinos a, have them for sure. It's crazy. Like I'm. I wonder how many like how many credit cards can you open before your credit score just gets shot to death? Well, it's. Do you want the real answer or do we want an entertaining answer? The the real answer. Both. It, Try both. It's debt to income ratio. So just it just a mat and it just how much credit line you have versus yeah and then versus your income versus your your debt that you have. So I mean, if you have a large income. You can open a substantial amount. Again, there's also like open like uh, stagnant credit. There's like there's all this stuff. Okay, so let, the so somebody let's say somebody makes let's say somebody makes a hundred thousand dollars a year and has no debt. How many credit cards with like three to five thousand dollar credit limits could they open up? Um, they're probably not going to get three to five thousand. They're the, going to get that more. Going to get like probably ten, fifteen. Did, yeah. And, They'll probably get some of the bigger name ones. I, you know, I don't really know how many like small. They could probably. They're the guys that are in gals that could go into anywhere and they're like, "Hey, do you want to apply for the JCPenney credit card?" And they're like, "Yes, approved. Here's five thousand dollars. Do you want the Walmart card? Yes. Right. Here's you like know. how many could they are they getting for they're in trouble? Something um, like that. Who's I think in a good financial spot. I think there's also a point per year that they're going to hit like the credit bureau is going to be like, "Hey." It's yeah. a lot of debt that you're just like opening up. Let's like hang on. So they're, they may get, um, cause there's also like total inquiries, like yeah. total inquiries. are going to ding your credit. Also. Right. If you're so, just like continually checking. Yeah. It. yeah. If, if you're showing like 15 in one year, they're probably like, ah, oh, you know, mm-hmm. so, and then if we're giving credit advice too, as well, cause I used to do like finance and things like that and help people get loans, but Make sure, like, if you're shopping for a car, you're shopping for a house, you have, like, a 30 to 45-day window typically where you can check your credit and, like, go look at different institutions to make sure you're getting the best rates. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of that term, it's going to count as one hard inquiry versus, like, five or six if you go look for them. So Mm -hmm. if you are listening, I wish I had that advice when I was younger. So there you go. If you're one of those listeners that's getting ready to do something like that. I actually got an email this morning that my credit limit got increased. Heck yeah. Those are great emails to get. It's a great email. It makes me, I was like, oh my gosh, all this money I can spend that I will never spend because I couldn't. I, I got that email like two <laughs> two weeks ago uh, on one of my credit cards and it freaked me out because I just went in to check it and then yeah. like the credit app, like the card app was down Oh yeah. and it showed just like a, like a triangle, like with exclamation point yellow. And it's like, you can't access your card. I'm just like, did someone? Oh did, gosh! This, did someone get into my card? And Terrifying. I'm like, you know, after everything that happened with with the YouTubes, I'm like, great. Yeah, you never know. Russia's got mm, a hold of me. Nothing's happened in it uh, in the hacking realm since that, yeah. at least on my front. So that, that's something I wish I could do. I wish I knew how to hack, but I would never use it for bad. I'd be like Robin Hood. Yeah, I was, you just I hack was pretty the people that hack people. Yeah, I was pretty close. I like to the YouTube channels that do getting that. into that. My my uh i guess he's my second cousin he's my dad's cousin he really smart guy he went to penn state did their computer science program and he um 
does like ethical hacking for Capital One Bank yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, you know, hacks into their stuff so that they can make it better. Yeah. And I thought that was the coolest thing ever. That so I really started cool. doing some computer science stuff and it just wasn't my cup of tea. But yeah. computer science, about it. the field of computer science going into that in college, if you want something just to make money is a great idea because you basically with a lot of computer science stuff you kind of just get out of college and you can name your price yeah like you can just go to a company and be like this is how much i want to make if you're you're good you can make it if you're good at it i mean i knew quite a few uh computer science majors who struggled to find jobs out of really because well i know i know at least like five years ago computer science was a field that was it's that was starting it's it's very saturated right now. okay that makes sense because like back because like a little while ago there was just like not enough people that did it but a huge need what for it, it what it does allow you to do is you can a freelance so yeah. like especially if you kind of learn how to write websites that's huge for freelancing and then and or if you know how to develop apps for people and Absolutely. say i can make yeah. your app that's huge mm-hmm. and then b if you have your own ideas you can write your own apps and websites and whatnot and and do that so i like, can't even begin to comprehend how you do that yeah, I don't there's know. also <laughs> my RA in, in college was a computer science guy. That's what he did. I learned something too that in like the the hacking world there, in the ethical hacking world, uh, the big companies like Amazon and like big online retailers and things like like Walmart, whatever, uh-huh. they have bounties that they put out for mm-hmm. ethical hackers. Oh, that's cool. Where like Amazon, they're like, hey, if you can do this, and like show us how you do it here's five hundred thousand dollars that's so yeah. sick so there's a lot of like so cool. ethical it's a very hackers. cool job yeah they'll do that and they'll they'll um i was listening to a podcast with a, with an ethical hacker on it and he would he would go on and be like okay amazon oh here's a ten thousand dollar bounty i'll work on that i make that payday hang out for a little bit then i go do another one that's crazy it's, how do you the problem is if you are a very talented ethical hacker how do you stay ethical because you're like oh I just, I just learned, like, they put out this bounty. I figured it out. I know how to hack into something very important on Amazon. Mm-hmm. What's to say I don't even turn it in? Like, that, they must have to make the... No wonder they make those expensive bounties because they're like, we need to reward yeah. these people so they don't just use what they learn yeah. to get into our system. I Gosh. Think I think it's just the ty- type of people. I mean, there's yeah. nothing stopping you from going out in that register and taking all that money right now. Yeah, or it's like a magician that learns That's really good, good sleight of hand. <laughs> it's like a magician that learns really good sleight of hand what stops him from just, like... Pickpocket. I'm yeah, a pick master pocket. pickpocketer. Watch this. Look. Hey, how's it going, Brad? Yeah. How are you doing? What? Wait, hold on. Where'd my watch go? <laughs> where'd, where'd, I like doing where'd, that where'd bit to people, go? just like hitting them all over. Yeah. Me like, <laughs> Trevor did that to me when we were in the car on the tour. I did it to it Robbie really as well. Except for my watch was much harder to get off. Yeah, the yeah. Apple watches are pr- Apple watches. Yeah. Those straps, which yeah. like they're very comfortable and convenient yeah. straps, but they're probably the easiest thing to pickpocket because yeah. you just kind of pull and they're gone. Yeah. Well, I promise if you touch my wrist, you're not leaving with a intact wrist. Daggum. So for me, it's eye sockets. I'm about hey, the eyes. I'm going for the eyes. Not, not eyes. to go back to the not to go I'm, back I'm to the going. orcas. <laughs> <laughs> no, go back to the orcas. Because where I was going with this with the orcas, I want to hear where you were going with the orcas. Like okay, nor orcas probably. I, my with, favorite part is dragging you off subject so that I can hear you drag us back on onto it. Yeah. That's, Sometimes I it's more that. abrupt. I tried with the Orca gas station and no one heard it. No, so. I, no, I heard it. I yeah. just, I think, I think we were just too, we were too, we were too passionate about sheets. <laughs> yeah, you guys really love sheets. Well, yeah, um, I do uh, love sheets. Why the sheets not? Yeah. Yeah. Is he right, what boys? I, that's what I said. Well, they sent us t-shirts that one time. More specifically, they sent Brody t-shirts and then he gave us some of them. So like that, no, they sent Brody t-shirt. Did I only get one? Yes, you're the only one. How did I get that? I he stole I it. I don't know. Unethical. All right, I stole it. <laughs> I have a T-shirt from Sheets. It says. Team I Sheets. think that you called dibs. And yeah. maybe, maybe that was what well, happened. Maybe that is sacred. So the orcas are like the wolves of the sea, right? And mm. I would say I probably out right. of any animal that we know of in the ocean, that's probably the scariest organized one that I Do would. You think, think that would be out a there. In the ocean. now well, we, hey, for we lack of no, I I fear sounding like an idiot here, but I don't feel like it's dumb to say. But would a um. Would a sh- would, could a shark also be a you know, based on the kind of shark? Could a shark be a wolf of the sea? 
No, they're not. Well, they don't. Hunt I don't in think packs. they hunt in packs. No, they don't, they don't organize. I mean, you have like hammerheads and stuff that all hunt in groups, but, but like a great white doesn't hunt in a pack. Yeah, because like, like orcas, that's like the equivalent yeah, of being hunted by a pack true. of great whites. That's now, true. that's not to say if like all of a sudden all the sharks are like, "Hey, stop being in the ocean," and you have like three hundred black tips cruising up and down the beach, just gnawing on people. Like that would be terrifying. Yeah, hey, I wouldn't mm-hmm. be thrilled about it. Got to yeah. say, but I mean, I'd be afraid. I think orcas would be very hard. Oh, I'd be so scared to like they're just, so smart and organized that's what i'm saying like if i saw it i was trying to think in my head well if i saw a shark in open water versus an orca i'm probably more scared of the shark no, no i actually disagree completely if i saw that orca coming to me i'm way more scared i of had that. i love the water but it's very easy to become scared in yeah. water at any point because you are always out of your element if you let no yourself, matter how good of a swimmer you are in the water swim. you are always out of your element yeah if you let yourself become a little bit uh like an orca would barely fit like in this room self aware yeah. of like what's going on when you're out in the ocean like what could be under there that's you were just always you. you were just always in floating space i thought something could always yeah just get you yeah well an or- and an orca too if they're coming near you they they are smart they create a wave to yeah. disarm you yeah. before they get to you like yes. i've never been in i've never like i when i go to the ocean i go pretty far out like to where i can barely stand like i love being out there mm-hmm. but i've never like scuba or done anything in open ocean water yeah, I haven't either. And that's so that okay. The crud An interesting out of me. thing about snorkeling is it's to it, to me. I thought it was going to be scary. Like I I love the water and I love animals, but I was a little bit nervous about like it was going to be scary. Yeah. But it wasn't because you'd think usually when you're swimming in the ocean, you you can't see what's it's underneath like you. Clear. But then the moment that you like put goggles on and a snorkel and you get under the water, <sighs> you can see everything and it's not scary because you can. That moment of like seeing the expanse under the ocean like would i think scare me a little well, bit well no so yeah, I used I, to it. in my opinion it was less scary because whenever you're above the water you think anything could be no scary. it'd be like every moment of breaking through and seeing all of yeah. that ocean like that would be like a scary i was thinking like everything is try- wants to kill me right now and yeah. then i went under and i saw the, okay first of all whenever you tell yourself this okay there's nothing around you there's nothing around you right now you're lying there's probably stuff all around you yeah. but Whenever you like snorkel or something like that, because we snorkeled like a big area in the uh, whatever the uh, ocean, one of the tropical islands, and um, we like went under, and there was animals everywhere, like co- everywhere surrounding. It was a big b- reef that we were on, uh, but they just didn't care that we were there. No, you swim. They were just like didn't care. You were just there. Yeah, it was, but so, it was cool. It made me less scared of it. So, if the orcas are coming after our boats, and that's terrifying, and they're teaching. So what what animals are we okay in the air and on the land? What are we afraid of next? Because oh, gorillas, the air would be bad if like some really big birds start snatching up our dogs. Let's just say hawks and eagles just start. They're like, dude, we're just we're we're just so upset about all your planes and all your drones. We're just we're that done would with be you. very scary because they could because birds, birds can just, very easily take down a plane. Mm, not easily. You need a big Pretty flock. Easy. You need a huge you, but flock. There's big flocks out there. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like you'd need maybe flocking. You would yeah. need a huge flock. But birds I mean, did you did you hear what? Like you know, like the famous bird incident is when how we big landed of a flock in, are we talking? It's when we landed in the Hudson River after the bird strike. You know that that story. Yeah. But, so after that, we literally went around and executing the birds in New York. What size so, flock will get it done? I don't think they want to mess with us. It. I'll. The planes these days need a lot of birds to get, ta- like, to like to all hit the engines to get taken down. Like, it's mm. pretty significant. But it, I'm not denying it couldn't happen. Like, it for sure I'm could. thinking less of, like, planes, but, like, you walk outside the door right now, and, and you birds. have hawks just diving at you. Yeah, not yeah. good, not With good. With four-inch talent. But I will say However, this. If I, I'm armored up and I've got a baseball bat, you're not going to have a well, full-time I, mean, I mean, even, like, a tennis racket. Yeah. You're like, not, I, I know hawks are really cool, they're but not at the end durable. of the day... They're much smaller than I, and it's if it's coming at me and I whack it with a tennis racket, it's not happening. We have day. peregrine falcons around here. They dive at like 160 miles <laughs> per hour. I, like I said, I'm I'm I would want some armor for sure. I would want some armor. Where's so this armor hit. coming from? Like the armor store, and they're going to sell out. Dang, they are going to sell out. <laughs> I have their credit card though. Right, no, that's, 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 you're see. right. If one diving is diving at you, full they speed, dive that's at terrifying. 160 miles an hour. But I feel like at hour. the end of the day, I just can take that tennis racket and hold it in front of me. Yeah, and I'm they maybe, go through it. Well, I'll just stay inside. <laughs> I just, <laughs> just won't live go inside. Outside. I'll yeah. just like run to my car. I would, I would say that if that day comes and we are being attacked by by hawks, or we're being attacked by birds, I would become a bird hunter. 
Yeah, like just crossbow. They would call me the Hawk Assassin. Yeah, Jeez. that upsets me. That title. I will say. I know. I'm sorry, but they started it. They started it, and I'm here to avenge my family. We just get a bunch of people out there with shotguns. We'll take care of them. Well, and on... Okay, so that's the air. On land, though, I think people are like, oh... I'm scared of gorillas. No. You're not scared of gorillas? Rats and mice. Yeah, I was going to say, it's the small things that can get in cracks and spaces in your house. You can't hide from them. Yeah. You can't hide from them. That's very true. Mm -hmm. That's terrifying. So you can never sleep. And they're... they're, They'll... They eat meat like they're crin- or carnivorous. even worse like spiders yeah i say some dangerous insects would be very scary ah! insects would be awful just they crawl up inside you and lay eggs mm. and then you become the host and then you're the host now congratulations Dang. host connor and then should have got the spider credit card <laughs> <laughs> we, we live out the plot of halo sort of basically <laughs> i've never seen that i don't know halo how oh, halo is in the movie the game the game about. Yeah. i understand that was there's a host there insects. Me. sorry mm. that was that was difficult <laughs> so yeah, um, animals are scary. They're coming to attack us. We're all doomed, and AI is going to help them attack us. I have a question. Hmm. Hmm. So let's go back to this whole orca thing with the killer whales. Oh, you'd like to talk about the orcas? Yeah, I'd like to bring it back to okay, the killer please. whales if you don't mind. Um, I I'm going to keep calling them killer whales because I feel like it does. I feel like it. I feel like it reminds people that these things are dangerous. All right. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna, it's so, also derogatory. You're kind of like putting them down. Yeah, so. you you kill a whales. Yeah, kill a kill a whales. Um, so say the kill a whales do begin to organize attacks upon all of humanity. They're already doing that, but continue. It's actually a pretty easy thing to figure out. Just use bigger boats and just don't go in the water for fun, which would be very sad. But you can do that. Uh, but it's just really aggressive. What animal would you choose to train to go after the killer whales to defend to defend against the killer whales mm. i mean it's got to be the sharks we're just gonna need volume yeah it, yeah just just throw a bunch meat of shield. meat sharks shield, are yeah. really dumb though uh, not all sh- mm. okay compared to the, orca, the scary all. sharks are really dumb. i mean i guess d- d- dolphins might be your best bet realistically you just need volume like they they obviously yeah. are hunted by orcas they're not as good as orcas but they are smart and they are still very dangerous creatures and they're fast um, and they're fast so like i you would want the dolphins you'd want the dolphins and you say listen they do? not all you are coming home dolphins they've got really sharp teeth and they can use tools. We've te- we've taught them how to use tools. That is true. Oh, if we can we get can them have dolphins with torpedoes. Yeah, I say we just need them to, yeah. to shoot torpedoes. Little for torpedoes us. on their wing. Their yeah, we flippers. just give them yeah, armor. We give them pointy noses. Yeah, and then oh. we give them torpedoes on their wings. Oh my gosh, a and, dolphin and with like a they just super jet, sharp nose. And then that awesome. killer whale is coming, and it's like I'm gonna get you, dolphin. And that dolphin's like, Shoo! and just like just ram straight through the side of it. it the, that. We turn dolphins into bullets. Into yeah, harpoons. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the dolphins are now bullets oh that penetrate yeah. the killer whales. <laughs> this this episode has become very, very sad. Um, I hey, don't mind it. So <laughs> I'm just kidding. That is yeah. sad. So all right, That's to to wrap the episode, I want to something I used to do in interviews or like I'd ask interview questions. My favorite interview question, which I learned from one of my bosses a very long time ago was it it always catches people off guard in an interview and i think it says a lot about people is i'd be like oh yeah tell me about your experience blah 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 I'm like okay if you could be one animal in the sea one animal in the air one animal on land what animal would you be and then they have to tell me so connor you've asked me this question before and i still don't really know what my answer is trevor if you had to be one animal on in the mm-hmm. air sea land what would it be okay um on the land, it's going to easily be a dog. I'm just gonna be treated the best okay. in life. Uh, in the air, I'm gonna kind of cheat and say uh, a parrot or exotic bird. Another one where I'm gonna live a really long time and be a very valuable pet. I could even talk. Um, and then in the sea, um, I'm gonna go with oh, killer whale. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm formidable out there. Yeah, I'm feared. So here, here's. And now here's what you do with that information. Trevor picked dog, so it tells me he's loyal, and he is also like works well in a team. And I like together. to go rub my belly, and he likes <laughs> he likes dog treats. And he as likes well. to eat his own crap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, exotic bird tells me that he does like to he's be the beautiful. center of attention, but he likes to be valuable to people. Mm. Oh, okay. Right, and he likes to add to an environment. It's another team thing, and mm. birds mm. are in flocks. And then killer whale tells me he pays attention to our conversation because we just talked for an hour about killer whales. 
Wow. That was very insightful. Connor, good luck with that, dude. I just got the best feedback of my life. Yeah, that's serious. I am going to go. Uh, I think that I would want to be a monkey, like a chimpanzee, but like okay. a one that like is friends with the humans, like where they have like a, like a, um, like where they're like trained. I want to domesticated. Wanna, yeah, I want to be a domesticated chimpanzee that's used for movies. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> Interesting. Because I can still climb and have fun and be a monkey because they're cool, but also people will like me because they're like because they're like <laughs> he, he gave, just tell he just him gave a, it up. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, I no, want to be liked. <laughs> no, because everybody likes a chimpanzee in a movie. You're anyway, right. whenever it comes to the sky. I think I'd want to be like, I don't know. I think, cause I think, cause part of me wants to say like the, for the fun aspect of it, I'd rather be something like a hawk because you would have the most fun because you could fly like long distances and do all this cool stuff. But also I think it'd be really cool to be an animal that like, like is kind of like under the radar that like no one's going to try to hurt this animal. And like, like a, like a hummingbird, everybody's got hummingbird feeders mm-hmm. and like, you can just kind of do your thing and no one hates you. Mm-hmm. And that would be fun, but I don't know. I don't know my answer for this guy. I can't do it. For the sea, a mantis shrimp. Great answer. Because yeah. they can see 360 degrees all around them. I didn't know that. They guy. also see like like 90% more color than humans see. So there's like colors that we don't even pro- know are colors that they can see with their eyes. I just and they're very insignificant. And yeah. their punch uh is has the same power as a uh 22 rifle. Okay. So the chimpanzee tells me that you like who you are cuz you picked something very close to a human so you like yeah. who you are. Um obviously it said you wanted to be comfortable as well. Like that's pretty obvious that you yeah. want to be comfortable. You don't really and then the hummingbird comment is like you're a social person, you like to be around people. Um also I think you think of yourself as less strong than you are. That's what the hummingbird says. Oh, gosh. And then... Uh, <laughs> Whoa, that was intense. And then the the mantis shrimp comment is like, you feel like you're a unique person. You like that you're, you have uniqueness, but you also like desire to protect the people that you love. Wow, that was very fun. I love stuff like this. Yeah, that was amazing. My, my answer when my original yeah. boss, like a long time ago... Um, I answered red tail hawk. No surprise there. No mm-hmm. surprise. Um, C was hammerhead shark. No surprise and there. And then land was a fox. Dude, mm. foxes are cool. So, Brad one time said that he saw me as a red panda, 100%. and I like that. I think that's cool. Yeah. Also, they're protected. They're a protected species. Yeah, that's true. Mm. Tre- Trevor, they're very cute. Trevor's like more like I think if Trevor was an animal. All right, I'm going to try not to like think about it too much. If Trevor was an animal, Trevor would be a caribou. Dude, that's sick. Those are huge. That is cool. I think you'd be a caribou. Are cool. Hunted for sport. Also, though. I love caribou coffee. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's this chain that uh, used. It's not popular anymore, but it used to be like a like close to as big as Starbucks. Well, not obviously not because you never heard of it. But uh, it's. I think. I think it was more so the southeast. Um, but there is a lot of them in Charlotte that I used to go to with my family. I thought time. caribou coffee was one of those weird, like exotic coffees. Like there's like coffee nope. that has bat droppings in. It. I thought it was like that, but with caribou. No, no it's like they it's, served it's at the like dining hall at Liberty. Mm. Yeah, that's true. It's like uh, if you took a Starbucks, pretty good, but you made it more like log cabin lounge themed. Yeah, all of them are like a, are like a log cabin. It was good, which is really fun. Yeah, interesting. It was really good yeah. coffee. Yeah. All right. That was fun. Thanks, Brad, for another great episode. Thanks, Brad. Another one. The banter with Brad. Banton with Brad. You're going to be welcome to join next week as well because I will be gone instead of Hunter. So. Yeah. And then I think it would be a very interesting, you know, me and Hunter dynamic on the banter. Oh, my gosh. I hope you're ready. That will be very interesting. Yeah, I hope you're ready. I think him I'm and I will ready. get in a legit argument next week. That's what I think. I will. I will tell you this. Can you send us in topics to debate? Uh, it's not that hard. Mm. Uh, I'm you just start so just talk about <laughs> you just had to talk about anything that he is passionate about and just and, it, pick and relatively knowledgeable view. about yeah. too well not necessarily he'll pick a side but he'll only really stick to one if he's like if he knows a good bit about it but i think a lot of realms 
like finance related, like y'all would probably agree on. Yeah. Maybe some things you wouldn't. I don't know. He's a little more conservative than me, but I think we agree for the most part on. Yeah. Much you can. You just have to. You're just gonna have to just hit him with a barrage of things and see what sticks. If you want to argue with Hunter, not many do. No, but he does. I like to. Argue I'll just pick the opposite yeah, he side. He does if I agree you. with him. Well, that's no, what that's well, a dangerous it's too game. late. That's what he's already done. <laughs> <laughs> already well, he's behind. the best in the game. Yeah, yeah. Step behind. He's a legend. All right, that's a banter. Adios.